the LSU Tigers' former head coach. And I think it's actually very ironic that you coached Odell Beckham. So I said this the other day, Coach. I said, I don't remember in college this being part of his personality, but it is very possible that you go to New York and you become a star and you're on the magazines and you're talked about, and that can screw up a kid's head. And I don't remember him being a crazy kid in college, was he? No, he, uh, he was a great teammate, a guy that came to work, practiced his butt off, um, and, uh, and really got in the heads of the opponents as opposed to, you know, be taken off his game, you know, his game. Yeah. yeah, so it's. I, I, have you talked to Odell throughout this journey? In, I have not, no. Yeah. I, uh, I, the only thing is, last time I saw him, it was at the Cavaliers um, six, game six yeah. uh, in Cleveland. And uh, But uh, he needs to just enjoy where he's at and what he's doing and learn, you know, a professionalism and, and what he needs to do to um, have success versus an opponent. You don't ever let an opponent get in your – in your helmet. Or it's, see your fear. Yeah. Well, I don't think fear is anything that he ever has. I, for, to me, it is a, you know, he feels like he's being, you know, cheated in some way. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's football. LSU is your life. I tell people all the time, I say, say it out loud. When Georgia let go of Mark Richt, I said, be very careful. Mark Rick won a lot of football games. By the way, Miami overnight looked really, really good. And I said, when you let go of Les Miles, okay. But it's the SEC, and he beat Nick Saban three times, won a national title, won seven bowl games, won 70% of his games. Forty years ago, 30 years ago, LSU was not a national title. It was more known for uh, moving the Richter scale after a big win. How painful is it to have something that helped define your life? You're wearing a purple tie today. Did you cry? Was there anxiety? What is it like to have that rip from you? Well, it's a... Um, you know, to say that you didn't care, that you wouldn't heartfelt emotion, that's not possible, okay? It is a part of your life. But you, you have to realize that uh, I've, I've had great fortune there. I have had great teams, great people. The relationships with the players on the team that I, the teams that I coach, the relationships of the assistant coaches while we prepared game plans and worked hard. I had great teams, and I'm, I'm loyal. I am a, a tiger, and... Uh, I, uh, I, I, I choose uh, to root for the Tigers, and, and I am I'm not going to look back in any way in a, in a negative view. But when it starts ending up in the papers, and listen, when you coach a college football power, you're on the hot seat every year, except for the year after you win a national title. You lost a national title game. The next day they're saying, get rid of Les Miles. You got to one, you lose it, you're a bum. When it starts hovering around the program, is for Charlie Strong right now. It's hovering around the program. Guys like me are talking about it. ESPN's talking about it. Is it difficult for your family? Is it difficult for you personally? I think uh, what we've done is kind of talked about being a part of an athletic family where you're uh, really at the will and good wishes of the people of Louisiana. And um, every coach that coaches, no matter Tennessee to Alabama, are – there at the goodwill and wishes of the people of so you that fe state. You, you feel fortunate. Your whole journey through this was, I was lucky, I feel fortunate. No Absolutely. anger, no resentment. No, no, no. What, what, what I did is I worked in, inside our building. I worked extremely hard to put together the best game plans that I could to feature our players to give us the best chance at victory. And I've always enjoyed that process. Sure. And simply put um, – I, I got a great opportunity with the Tigers, and we had great success. And I say, you know, if if someone wants a change, if the change is going to occur, let's go. Is it reasonable to say, though, this happened before with Steve Spurrier. Steve Spurrier got about 15 guys fired, a lot of good coaches. That Nick Saban right now, nobody's beating him, okay? He got Mark Rick fired. I could argue he got you fired. That the reality is, could I argue that the SEC is overreacting to a transformative head coach? Pete Carroll got a lot of guys run out at USC. Chip Kelly ran a lot of guys off at Oregon. Is the SEC overreacting to Nick Saban and being unrealistic to all their coaches? They fight virtually every team as a new coach. Well, if you're saying are the coaches in the SEC are the, um, the, uh, the level that they must play to and have success— um, that the schools are more impatient based on the example right. of a real quality Nick Saban, Alabama team. Yeah. Um, I, I would say that there's a lot of coaches that are impatient like him, that enjoy competing with him. 
I think that the the to make it a definitive, um, you know, this much or that much, I don't think that happened. But I do think that, you know, that that Nick Saban comparison is a realistic in the SEC. And uh, if you don't enjoy uh, playing the best, you, you need not to pl- put your seat down in the in the uh, Western Division. Okay, um, you've been told by coaches before you're 62. You have Southern roots and Midwestern roots. Those are your strength roots. So the Pac-12 probably doesn't have the familiarity with Les Miles, but the Midwest does, and the Big 12 does, and the SEC does, and the Northeast, because of geographics, would. Are you going to get back into coaching? Like, do you go coordinator? you got plenty of money. Like, what do you do now? Because there's like, we, we could have seven, eight, nine job offers. You've got a track record of a national title. All those guys out there looking for gigs, they don't have national titles. you got a national title. You won 70% of your games. You won seven bowl games. Will you coach next year? The, the great, opp- the great a right opportunity, the, the right school, the, the right um, place, you betcha. I, uh, I'm not a uh, – I don't play golf. I'm not a fisherman. I, uh, I, there's no. I'm gonna chase my kids around. I'm gonna. I'm gonna watch them in in this time. Um, but like football's uh, your life. Yeah, my my wife is already through with me around the house. You know, I'm. I don't need to organize that. You don't need to organize this. Get out of the house. So I'm. I'm uh, very active in a. Uh, in uh, in kind of seeing what the lay of the land is in for my future. Would you do broadcasting? Absolutely. I, I, I could see this could be, be in my gig. I could kind of put my seat right beside yours, Colin, and, and just <laughs> we could. Uh, I don't know how he feels about that. Just bump me off the corner. That <laughs> sounds like what you're doing right there. Okay, here's my. I'm going to criticize you for something. Tell me if I'm fair or not. Go ahead. All these athletes, all these NFL guys. I've had, I mean, I think Nick Saban's told people, like, like you could make an argument that LSU, from a recruiting standpoint, has geographical edges on Alabama because you can recruit East Texas better. But your offenses, like Frank Beamer at Virginia Tech, special teams, special teams running the football defense is unbelievable. But your offenses, how can you have all these NFL guys and struggle at quarterback? Is that a fair criticism? Um, uh, I don't, you know, I have to go back and look. But the give you give you an example, a guy like Zach Mettenberger. Yeah. Uh, Zach Mettenberger, we had uh, two thousand yard receivers and a thousand yard rusher. That's the balance of our offense that we need. Obviously, when Matt Flynn was there, we, we did it again. You're, you're looking at, uh, you know, our best teams, we had quality quarterback play. But I, th- I think everybody, you know, really starts as you go to build a team with a quality quarterback. Do you think football – I mean, we've got Notre Dame now, fire a coordinator. We're not even halfway through the season. Texas, demote the coordinator. We're four games, five games into a season – are we losing a little humanity that in college football, the message we're sending to 19-year-old college kids is, when are you canned? No patience. Win more than family. You can preach family at LSU, but if you have to demote a defensive coordinator in week four, you wouldn't do that to your brother. You wouldn't do that to your sister. Is college football, as it grows as a business, losing its humanity? You know, I, I, uh, I, I'm not... I'm not ready to critique college football. I, it, to me, it's been something that I've enjoyed, and, and I got a quality education as a player. I, uh, I, I pursued a, a, a wonderful career and, and continue to. I, I, it's, it's hard for me to criticize a, a, um, what, what happens, okay? Um, management skill and the ability to make decisions um, vary across the map, okay? And... I think you, if if you're a uh, if you're a high school uh, student athlete, you gotta look at that place that, that you think that has stability, that place that the coach is liable to be there for your time, and uh, um, and and I think that the decisions that are made, um, some are made haphazardly, some are made with great you know did, insight. Did college football ever make you do something you didn't want to do with your staff? Did you ever have to get rid? No, of, it I never, never did. did. Never so you did. never made a move that you thought you were being pressured from above? No, never did. In all your career? In all my career. That's pretty good. Well, I, I want you to know, I, I, here's, what, here's what happens to me, okay? Um, we know our team best. We know the skills and abilities of the, the quarterbacks, the receivers, the defensive linemen, the, the corners. You know your the, guys. We know our guys. So we put them in the best chance, um, in the best positions to give us the best chance of victory. Now, um, any opinion that comes from the outside in, um, 
doesn't have the merit that the the that the time frame of practices and and review and um, decisions between quality assistance, you know, to me, that has always been where we've operated. We've operated with the opinion inside our football building, and that's that's been the decision, and that's how we went. Leonard Fournette's a remarkable player. There was a narrative before the season that he's had two great years. What in the world's he doing playing a third year? He's going to get hurt. What is your opinion on superstar athletes? You've had a handful that are ready for the NFL after two years. Could I make the argument if I was Leonard Fournette? It's not worth risking college football. I'll sit out. What if he came to you and said that? What would you say? Um, he he's never come to me and said that. Okay. And his you understand he's you know, Davis White's a teammate. Uh, Kendall Beckwith's a teammate. Um, uh, Darius Geis is a teammate. Uh, Will Clapp is a teammate. You play for your team. You play for the guys in that room. You play for um, LSU, and and it's a special time. It is not. Uh, it's That's... not to be confused with the NFL. And yet, um, if you don't have an insurance policy in place, if you're not, you know, ready to, you know, take the next step in that you, financially and for a great player, certainly, that that insurance policy needs to be in place at several levels. What if their what if their family couldn't afford it? Well, the NC2A provides an opportunity. Um, s- some schools are allowed to buy insurance for that um, for that player. Was LSU? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. so, that makes me feel better. Allowed to. I don't know that we did so much as as, as we did arrange a, a, a an opportunity to talk to this you know entity and and a loan could be possible. Okay, that makes me feel good. Because for some kids, you know, economically, I mean you coach, you you know you've had a lot of kids economically that don't have the life you or I have. Yeah. Well I uh, I think our guys, you know, aspire to be in that NFL. And as long as their today is protected by insurance. They're today. Yeah, they're today. They're right now. Is They ought to turn and enjoy their, their, their time with their teammates. You understand something? That team will never be put together again. The, 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 the guys that they went to school with, that they, you know, from freshman to junior year, um, they – this was this was their team. This is this is their guys, and so for them, can't replicate it. No, you 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 have a you have a once in a lifetime college experience, and you need to go take the greatest advantage of it. Well said, Les Miles. Good seeing you. Nice seeing you, Colin. In the Los Angeles area, <laughs> it's the herd. <laughs>